Amrad dual capacitor. Capacitor flip. Nailed it. What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Thank you so much for tuning in. It's me, Mikey Pipes. And today we are in the incorporated village of Roslyn Harbor. We got some pool heater parts to put in. Let's go make it happen and give him some hot water for the pool. There is today's patient. Got a ray pack, heat pump, pool heater, discharging cold air. I got a couple parts I need to put in over here. Last, last summer. All right, let's see what's going on. I got my Vito TP XXL. See what kind of discharge temperature we're working with here. All right, I got an ambient temperature right now, an outdoor ambient temperature of 45.3 degrees. Some pool equipment here. I'm surprised for the size heater, sorry, for the size pool that they have, I'm very surprised that they have such a small sand filter here. Um, I have a 45,000 gallon pool uh, 20 by 40, you know, traditional eight feet deep. And um, my sand filter is, I don't know about that tall, uh, wider, of course. All right, we're at 34.2 degrees, 35, 36. Customer's complaint here is that it's not heating and uh, you really can't see the temperature. Half the display is broken, so. And it just cut off for some reason. It says something, I don't know. Hmm. Let's change out the display. So I know that we're gonna have a double breaker there. So even if it was labeled wrong and there's only one like double breaker, chances are that's gonna be for the heat pump. You know, it's the heat pump for a pool heater is essentially a giant condenser for central air conditioning. So now that the power is off, We'll remove the panel off the side of this unit and I'll take a look under the hood. Of course. <laughs> Five sixteenths and quarter inch screws, go figure. All right, I put my screws off into a little uh, tray right there. Happened to be laying on the floor. I guess one of the fence post tops fell off like, I guess that one, no. Huh. Wonder where that piece came from. Maybe another fence post. Maybe. I removed the screw holding the ground wire. And there's our control board. So let's disconnect and get the new one in place. All right, I got the new board in place. I wish, I wish this was a little bit longer. Why it's so short? Because you can't maneuver the, uh, the panel and the control board around that much. Uh, maybe they were trying to save on ground wire. Maybe there was a, uh, was a short supply of green wire because there's plenty of extra slack and everything else, but not on that. Go figure. Um, there's the old board. You even changed that little uh, gasket around the display. I don't see any indication of any kind of abnormal look appearance or anything on this board. Looks fine. Um, I guess we'll find out what happens.
Okay, set model type. Model not set. At least now I have a, uh, a nice legible display. All right, so I set my model temp uh, for heat and cool. I just Googled the, uh, the model number and this is a heating and cooling uh, pool heat pump. Um, set that for 90. Okay, and now right now we are in a compressor uh, start delay and we have a water temperature of 69 degrees. All right, our heater is running. The compressor just kicked on. Our contactors pushed in. We're gonna see what this thing does. Now, if you recall when we first arrived, the system was running, the compressor was not. Uh, and then on camera, the compressor kicked on and we couldn't read what the display was reading. I am gonna guess by looking at the coil it was cleaned by us last year. I'm gonna guess just on a whim that we have a, a low refrigerant pressure condition. I hope not, but if I had to guess right now, we're gonna have a low refrigerant pressure condition. So 34 degrees on our discharge temperature. What a temp of 69 degrees. Let's keep an eye on this and see what it does. Okay, right now I am starting to hear a slight noise in the background. I'm gonna guess it sounds like, you know, that, that outdoor unit when it's low on refrigerant, you got that little sound there. I hope that's not the case, but we are still running. It's been running for a good two minutes or so right now. We're gonna keep an eye on this. In case you're wondering, I am probably gonna cut out some of this idle wasted time. So, uh, at the board, you guys. All right, she's been running for a couple minutes already. I'm gonna take my Fluke 902 FC clamp on uh, multimeter. All right, it's got the thermal couple on there. All right now we're reading 44 degrees. Let's go uh, confirm the pool temperature which did drop down to the great 68 degrees there now. And uh, let's check our pool temperature and the outlet temperature at one of the jets. It feels it's actually much warmer than I thought it was gonna be. So we're at 69 degrees and let's put our probe inside the jet. Uh, looks like 72. Keep in mind we're 44 degrees outside. 72 degrees discharge temperature. It is kind of cold out here. See, it's cold. 41.4 degrees. It's cold. 40.9. I wonder if the wind chill is taken into consideration. What do you think? Nope. <laughs> All right, we're now uh, testing again our... Um, dynamically testing sorry we're now dynamically testing again uh, the dual capacitor for the fan side uh, right now I have a voltage reading between common and fan of 344 all right so let's put 344 in there I did have 345 before I do have an amperage of 0.7 on that and I have a 5 rated capacitor on the uh, microfarad reading and it's saying no this is unlikely all right, but we do have um, 5.4 currently reading, which is a deviation of almost eight on this. So I'm gonna recommend we replace this dual capacitor. Uh, keep in mind the pool has been running, no issues found. The water temperature is 68 degrees. We already did the uh, our temperature with the uh, Fluke thermal couple plugged in to measure that. And just so, full disclosure, all right, uh, 0.7 on that ground wire, which is our condenser fan motor. So we're gonna need to replace this 80 over five dual capacitor. All right, I killed power to the heat pump. We're gonna discharge now and take a look at this, by the way. See that 
that spade terminal right there she's a little looks a little burnt let's just just charge our capacitor uh there are some youtubers out there and also some techs that use their fingers to um to basically jump those out so you don't you can discharge the capacitor some guys like to use a resistor um your mileage may vary whatever works for you you know it's fine for me you know it's just i just show you what i do and um you know as long as you practice safe uh hvac uh skills when you're handling equipment you know then it's all good at the end of the day uh you know we want to go home to our families all right so i removed that wire and i gotta tell you that is definitely definitely not factory so let's just take off the rest of the wiring here brown being our fan and Oh, she fails the shake test, actually. Listen to this, ladies and gentlemen. Let me move away from the heater so you can hear this. Ready? You hear that swishing around in there? You know, factory. There was no noise coming from this capacitor, so this failed the shake test, and it also failed dynamically testing while the system is running. Uh, figures it is made in, no, assembled in Mexico. Wow, Mexico. All right, let's go get an 80 over five. Give him an Amarad. Amarad dual capacitor. Capacitor flip. Nailed it. There's a, uh, a YouTuber. I think he's in the Palm Beach County, Florida. He likes to take his drill and nailed it. All right, so um, I took that wire out that went between the contactor and the common terminal of a dual capacitor and you know how when the wiring gets all like towards the end when it starts getting like burnt and stuff it gets very very hard this is very very hard and like crunchy so i am going to replace this wire um why it's overheating like that i don't know um but last year when we were here this this Raypack heat pump condenser was uh, pretty coated in, uh, in fur. Uh, she was wearing a fur coat. Um, I, was in get, I gave it to your sister after taking it off for her because she's a little bare. So let's go, uh, let's replace this wire. All right, I have my new dual capacitor in place. This is the Amrad as uh, I shown, as I shown, as I showed, <laughs> duh in the, uh, the capacitor flip clip uh, there is a new um, 12 gauge wire from we'll call that L2 the bottom of the contactor with incoming power coming in to the C terminal this one's a little different you notice this one has four terminals on top uh, identified with Herm for hermetically sealed compressor fan for that fan motor uh, this orange terminal, which is labeled CPT, uh, that stands for the Compressor Protection Terminal. If you had a hard start device on this system, you would hook up one of the leads to CPT. AMRAD is the only manufacturer, uh, actually global, sorry, uh, which is a, uh, owned by, um, which is the parent company of American uh, Radonic Company in Palm Coast, Florida. Who manufacture is AMRAD dual capacitors and capacitors of that nature. They're the only manufacturers that have that CPT terminal in there um, that takes out the that hard start relay um, when there's that terminal and it's wired properly. And the middle, of course, is C. New wire, all in. Um, let's fire up. Let's latch this up since I don't think I'll be going back in there again. And we're going to have a several minute compressor delay. There you go. And then we'll test our readings again dynamically. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching this video. If you have a pool heater and you're in the Long Island metropolitan area and you need a hand, give me a call 516 348 6300. You can also book a virtual consultation online at pipedoc.net. Click the little thing, request service, scroll down to admin, and you'll, you can select a virtual appointment with me, Mikey Pipes, licensed master plumber in New York, South Carolina, and Florida, 
also HVAC contractor in those three respective states. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, be well, God bless, stay safe.